Welcome to Mono Tutorials. In this session, we're going to be looking at colliders and using them in Mono. We'll be looking at basic colliders. We'll be looking at mesh colliders. We'll be looking at how colliders are used in Mono. Let's jump in. So I have a simple space here. I've removed the portal just so that doesn't get in the way. But today we're going to be looking at a few different colliders. Colliders are used in uh, Mona to make sure that the player doesn't run or fall through your environment. We also use colliders for uh, being able to visualize assets such as artifacts or portals or canvases. So when I'm looking at the object, it knows that that's the object it's looking at. So let's look at some of the basic tools. So when you create uh, some basic objects, like say a cube, uh, some of these objects will come with a collider attached. So we have a box collider, and you can see it in the green. Now if you want to modify a collider, it basically comes down to this tool here. So if you click that, you'll have dots that you can pull up and down to where the object is. Usually though, that you'll import an asset from another thing like Blender or Maya, and then you will use the uh, add component to add a box collider, uh, sphere collider, or any other collider that you like. Uh, we're going to go with a sphere collider, uh, which we can't really see, but if we go to wireframe, we certainly can. Uh, once again, clicking on this, you can make it bigger or smaller as you see fit. Um, you can also use this to adjust the position and of course the radius as well. The is trigger toggle is used to remove the physical collider and keep it as a, a trigger volume. Uh, different assets use this in different ways. So the PPV requires this to be on. Uh, so when I walk into the volume, it knows that it's a PPV. Let's get rid of that one. Uh, the next one we can use is a capsule, uh, which is kind of a circle, but Uh, you have this shape as well. So you can do that. Uh, you can also rotate it on this. Now, sometimes you'll find that you actually want to create a collider uh, at an angle. Now, in this case, you can create an empty game object. So let's just go collider. Put the collider on that object. And because it is a, a game object, I can rotate the game object uh, as needed. To my knowledge, this is the only way you can rotate a uh, basic collider type. Uh, if you're making sort of a bunch of walls and you want to make this as performant as possible, you could do this with your space where you create uh, one box collider, copy that, using right mouse click on the top of the component and then right mouse click and paste as new uh, and create your walls like so. Uh, so for example, I might copy that one again, paste as new. Like so. So that's another way you could create uh, a simple uh, wall situation. Uh, with your space that is very performant as it's only using four box colliders rather than a mesh collider. So that's basically how we add colliders. So I'm going to remove those to simple objects. Now, the problem with uh, more complex colliders is that many, many builders are just simply put a mesh collider on a more complicated object. So you might have uh, a curved asset that has a lot of polygons. And when you put a mesh collider on that, every polygon is getting looked at when the player is running near it. It is better to create a more optimized mesh in your 3D tool to use as a mesh collider. So let's have a look at some examples there. So here is a asset that I've created in uh, Blender. As you can see, the poly count is 
well, reasonable for a 3D space in Mona, but uh, you definitely probably wouldn't want this in as a collider. You don't need it. There's too much information. So if I wanted to, I could just cut down these uh, lines. Now this of course would be a copy to the original rather than the, the thing that I'm just doing. So you create this asset here. Um, if I wanted to, I could probably take a few others away. Uh, depending on how detailed or you want it to be, but this is much better. So you would have this as the uh, mesh collider. And let me undo all of these. And this as the uh, main collider. Now, what you would want to do is make sure that they are in the same space. So if you, in Blender anyway, if you do Control A and all transforms, and let's say I have this other one here, uh, which is uh, the one I'm going to use and control a this one here. This will allow these to line up a lot easier. I also find that uh, colliders should be solid. Uh, that has a much better chance of being readable as a collider. One sided colliders do tend to have issues. Uh, sometimes if you go from the wrong side, you'll get actually projected forward. So it's best to make sure that mesh colliders are closed when you're making them. Now, while we're here, I could also show you the, another tool that I use. So if you have stairs and you want to have a more smooth experience, some people prefer to keep it as stairs. Some prefer to keep it more smooth. You could create a ramp approach so as a collider that way the player will just move up smoothly so this is really good for sort of curved ramps or long ramps um, so you don't have the character going up like in a staggered approach uh, so once again i'm going to control a make sure that these two are aligned and export accordingly so let's go curve high Uh, this is on the desktop. Selected objects. And then apply a transform because there's no animation. That's okay. Export. Same with Collider. So let's go back to our space. Let's get rid of our cube. Let's make this shaded. Uh, so let's add our object. So these are all in our models. So I'm just gonna put this in assets there. Uh, and I'm also going to add, type in mesh collider which is what we want. Now note, when you have a mesh collider, it uses the mesh of the imported object by default. But in this case, we actually want the mesh of the collider down here rather than the default object. So we actually want this object here, not this. So if we go to curve, grab our mesh and put that there, that is now much better. So as an example, if I have the curve collider, that can't be dragged in. So it has to be the mesh object underneath it. So now that we have our asset there, I can move it. And there we have our improved mesh. Uh, let's do the same with the stairs. So let's add our stairs. Let's add a mesh collider. So I've still got mesh in there, mesh collider. And we want our stairs collider, like so. And as you can see, uh, it has that. Now notice how I moved it a little bit forward and a little bit down. Uh, that just uh, balances that out so it doesn't overlap the, the stairs too much when you get in the wrong place. So that said, I have this. And that is a collider, so that is red. So we can do that. So let's uh, put these two here. 
Uh, and let's let's add so a portal. So just so you can see uh, how those are working. So let's go a door in a portal. Move that over there. Now notice how our object here, the portal tagged object, has a box collider. This is both what you see and a collider. So I can't run through this object, uh, even though this object does not have a collider. So at the moment, this is a collider. It is not possible to turn the ears trigger on either in order to make it not a collider. Make sure that none of your assets have colliders that override this collider. It could be that the, the portal cannot be seen if it is overridden by others. Now, of course, this applies to other assets. So if we have an artifact, like so, put that over here, um, and a canvas. Now, the canvas is interesting in that this one is a special case because the uh, canvas tagged object has a mesh collider. Uh, canvases require mesh colliders. Uh, it cannot use a box collider, sphere collider, or any other type of collider. And it has to have a mesh collider. So if it doesn't have a collider at all, it will throw an error in the QA. Uh, artifacts require sort of box colliders. Uh, mesh colliders are also possible. And same with portals. Uh, this could be a mesh collider as well, but not recommended. All right, so the last thing I'm going to do before giving it a quick test is adding uh, the stairs uh, with the standard mesh collider. So you can see the difference between a ramp and uh, normal steps. So let's just add that in there. Uh, now, usually if you have a mesh collider with the original mesh, you can't actually see uh, the mesh collider. So by adding convex, you're actually uh, sort of making, enabling the mesh collider to collide with other mesh colliders. Um, but the convex mesh colliders are limited to 255 triangles. That's one way you could actually optimize the asset a bit, but it does have limitations on that. Um, so in this case, we're just going to be leaving that off and leaving the stairs. You don't really need to see it because it is what you see there. Now, because our spawn point is red, we're actually going to move that out here to make sure that's okay. And let's rotate it to save a bit of time on that. All right, uh, so now that we've got that, let's uh, have a quick build. So we'll get this out. So as you can see, the object here is the object and it got a uh, more optimized version. So it's very close to the original, kind of more performant as well. Now with the stairs, we can snap up to these and notice how there's no overlap. Well, very little overlap uh, with the step here, but you do have the up and down movement. Whereas this one, which is the ramp, is a much smoother experience. However, it does have some sort of overlap on the feet, uh, but pretty subtle. So it depends on which experience is better for your space. Uh, next up, we have our portal. So as you can see down the bottom, the UI comes up saying I can see it. Uh, and it is a collider. Same with the artifact. So we can look at that. And that is also a collider. Uh, and then we have our canvas. Now, this is a good example of a single-sided mesh collider. So on this side, it works because the object is facing this way. But if I go from the back, I will basically be projected uh, uh, quite a ways, <laughs> actually. Um, so you can use that for you if you do one-sided mesh colliders. But generally speaking, we don't recommend it uh, for that very reason. So that is a good example of mesh colliders, box colliders. Um, of course, you could use sphere colliders or capsule colliders on uh, basic assets if you wanted to. The only one that forces uh, mesh colliders is basically the canvas. Okay, uh, so I think that's it for colliders. Hopefully that helps and have a nice day. Happy building.